Well, well, well. That is an awful lot of diversity heads rolling across the landscape now, isn't it? <laughs> Almost as if someone somewhere is learning a lesson. <laughs> and hey, sure, one is happenstance. It, it occurs, you know, it, it happens. Two is coincidence. Three. <laughs> now that's a pattern. <laughs> All right, so um, many of you have probably heard about the fairly high-profile exit, as they call it, of Disney's chief diversity officer. But there have in fact been three high-profile exits from chief diversity officer positions. Warner Brothers sent theirs packing, Netflix has also seen theirs waffle out the door, and of course Disney too. So three entertainment giants all said fond farewells to their heads of diversity, equity, and inclusion within weeks of one another. Now that's just downright suspicious. Especially considering too that um, on the latest Disney earning call, of course, we heard the Disney CEO himself say that a lot of the diverse programming, well, it simply wasn't driving subscriber growth in the way that they figured it would. Oh, taking into consideration the continued failure of diverse programming across the board, into consideration that Disney might be $900 million plus in the hole, and with the bombing of the Dial of Destiny as well, and the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery is currently trying to yeet their diversity department into as small and legal a corner as possible, and Netflix having been working on this for quite some time, hmm. Now, one interpretation could be that this version of diversity and inclusivity just you know, didn't work out for them, but that there's a new bright and upcoming multiracial lady, in all due likelihood, sitting in the wings thinking to herself, but I can do it better. If only you would yeet my predecessor, I, I will bring true diversity to television and movie entertainment. I doubt it'll work out for them, but that could be one explanation that they are simply taking the old, rotten, and now clearly failed head and replacing it with somebody else. But the other interpretation is that, well, we know that a lot of these big companies, they talk to one another. They have conversations, the CEOs, the heads of marketing, etc. They're all in the same group of people, shall we say, and they share tips and little tidbits here and there. And to see three people, all at the head of their own diversity divisions, all go within, again, less than a month of each other, hmm. That sounds like there's some rumblings going on right there. Some rather strident rumblings as well. And again, as we've talked about, in fact, just a couple, what, days ago? With the ESG score, the CEO of BlackRock, one of the largest investment firms in the world, managing, what was it, six or nine trillion dollars worth of assets? Or some ludicrous government level number? He had stated that he was ashamed of being, uh, you know, thought of along the, the ESG label lines. Ha. Huh. So one of the biggest champions and largest money men of ESG is now ashamed of the label. And then suddenly, the people responsible for building the corporate structure to appease the ESG gods get yeeted from three companies? <laughs> Again, there are many quinky dinkies in this world, but I somehow doubt this is one of them. This seems like a pretty direct cause and effect. ESG is falling out of favor ever more. One of the biggest investment people in the world says that he no longer likes the label and wants to get rid of it. And then, diversity, equity, and inclusion officers, whose, again, primary job is to make the company's ESG rating rise, lose their jobs. Hmm. Because, of course, diversity, etc., has never actually sold products. 
there has not been any point in time where the wokists ever replaced the key core audience of, well, anything. If anything, they didn't even really try to replace the audience. Whenever they did, they failed miserably to do so because the wokists by and large are first and foremost a very small minority, and secondly, not actually interested in the thing you are selling. Their purpose for getting into Star Wars is to turn Star Wars into a political tool, not to watch the movies. And even if they did, they would probably have an objection or two as to how Finn was treated, particularly in certain foreign nations, for example. Not to mention, of course, the fact that pleasing them is literally actually genuinely impossible, to the point that we have seen companies try and try and try and try, even with the recent uh, My Little Black Mermaid, and it too was criticised for not taking the history of colonialism into account, you see. How, how dare you have a little black mermaid and not talk about slavery? Ah, oh, Yes, the transatlantic mermaid slave trade. Hmm. Picking um, sea sausages or undersea cotton, I suppose. <laughs> you know, that would be funny. I would actually quite enjoy a movie about the undersea cotton picking trade. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. And. Since there was never about actually putting butts in seats to watch anything, it never actually sold well at all. Disney managed to turn one of the largest entertainment entities in the world, Star Wars, into a failing one with just a three series of movies and of course Han Solo, which was quite the creation in and of itself. But so long as the investor money kept flowing, yeah, who cares? If they're getting income via you purchasing a ticket to Disney World or buying a t-shirt or going to see a movie, or if they're getting it all from billionaire investments overseas or domestically, it's all the same to Disney. Money is money after all, and so long as it's flowing in at a greater rate than it's flowing out, and so long as their credit score remains high enough to replace any potential losses inquired by diverse inequity, it's all the same cake to them, honestly. It's not that the companies don't care about the money, because that, that was one of the arguments put forth as well. You know, maybe Disney has so much money now that it just doesn't care. Maybe Google has so much money that it's just trying to push a political agenda, that the agenda has become more important than the money. I don't think that's true. I simply think that they thought they had a separate source of revenue that they could build up and milk near infinitely, because it appeared to be that way. The ESG scores and BlackRock, and I get BlackRock manages trillions of dollars. Disney's entire loss, if we assume that the 900 billion, etc., is, or what is it, million, 900 million, is correct. It is a rounding error to an investment company like ba Black English BlackRock. They don't care. The money is there, free for the taking. But now that that wellspring is once more drying up, well, they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars probably a year to somebody whose only job is to increase this rating. Remember the um, the bank that closed a few months ago? The one whose chief diversity officer was also in charge of like hiring new people for risk assessment management, and she focused her time on organizing a gay parade within the company rather than looking at a head of risk management? It was because that was a literally better usage of her time. Well, probably not seeing as the company went under, but you get my drift. In her point of view, looking for investment money was more important than hiring a new head of risk management. It's the same in all of these companies. These people have been hired not to make sure that there are enough brown, black, or yellow people in the company. They've been hired to make sure that there is enough money coming in from outside sources. They were intended to be a revenue stream. But now that that revenue stream is drying up and they need to instead sell products, well, they are an impediment rather than a benefit because all of their requirements hurt the product. It makes the product worse. It creates negative publicity. It gets people to boycott you. In fact, if you're a company like Bud Light or Target, it makes people boycott you to the point where you are losing up to a quarter of your entire business to it. It is lethal now to be a diverse company in America. And more and more of these companies are beginning to realize that, which is why we are seeing all of these exists in such a very, very short amount of time. And I would 
speculate that even if these positions get refilled, they will be filled by some temporary employee. Someone that can be relied upon to disassemble everything that was built before they came. As of course, the massive diversity officer uh, offices within many of these companies will require quite some building down. And, remember as well, as Warner Brother Discovery figured out, there will actually be legal challenges to this, because the wokists have gotten so far into the institutions that in many cases, disabling or uh, disassembling diverse initiatives might actually land you in legal trouble. Hmm. So if these are to be taken care of, they will have to be rooted out from the top up rather than simply just deleted, which would seem to be the most elegant solution. Uh, hopefully that is the case, we will see, as over the next few years there will be really the litmus test. If our entertainment begins to change for the better, we will know that the companies are yet again trying to appease us and, you know, sell us a product rather than merely just earning more investment money. But again, it could take years and years before the changes really begin taking effect, as most of our entertainment is planned years and years in advance. Hell, The Rings of Power is still pre-ordered, remember, for five seasons. <laughs> oh hey, you know, five seasons of content for me, I'm hardly complaining, I suppose. Still, it is very heartening to see these heads go tumbling across the meadows, and uh, I am looking forward to more high-profile firing along these same lines from other companies. Until next time, I have been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.